Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Womack. And I'm Mr. Mo. And today is Wakanda Tech Academy Mixed Reality. So what we're gonna do is obviously um, explain what mixed reality is, um, AR and VR, and how AR and VR is reflected in Black Panther. And then also why it's critical for us to have an understanding of what we can do with mixed reality. And then Mr. Mo will get into a pretty cool activity uh, using a mixed reality tool called CoSpaces and um, Merge Cube, right? In the Merge Cube. In the Merge yep. Cube. So. All right. Okay. I want to make sure I have that correct. So if you want to uh, uh, pull up the slides. really quickly. Okay. All right. So go ahead. I'm just changing. Okay. So as we always do um, at the opening of Wakanda Tech Academy, and remember that the T stands for technology, the E entrepreneurship, the C culture, and then the H um, history. And we're trying to merge all of those um, concepts together, we always go back to this quote here um, by Toni Morrison, who is a famous um, Black female novelist um, who passed away actually last year, 2019. And she says, your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. And so again, the idea here is that um, the knowledge that you gain through Wakanda Tech Academy or anywhere is that you are supposed to pass on those knowledge, that knowledge or those skills to others, okay? Not just have it for yourself, but um, pass that knowledge and skills along for it. So we always like to come back to that quote for each Wakanda Tech Academy. All right, so what is virtual reality or VR? Um, if, as you see here in this image, um, in VR, you're wearing something on your head, um, some kind of head mounted display that Mr. Mo, he'll, he'll go through all of these later, but it can look like a set of goggles or a space helmet and it holds a screen in front of your eyes and whatever plays on that screen kind of becomes your reality. So you're um, immersed in almost like you live in that reality story or world. Yeah. And so, and not only does it just hold a screen, it's actually uh, for most modern headsets, two screens, okay? And so the reason you have two screens is so you create this, what they call a stereoscopic view um, that creates two different images that are offset slightly. So it gives you a perception of depth, okay? So you're able to, so it's not just a screen, uh, a flat screen, it gives you this perception of depth using the two screens. And so it looks more three-dimensional. Um, and so that that kind of adds to the immersive effect of it. Okay. And then AR, what is augmented reality? Is it, can they see the screen? Yep. They can see okay. It. All right. Um, what is augmented reality or AR? And so with AR, um, it's like laying a digital image over top of a real image. And a lot of times people use their phones and then they'll lay it, their phone, the digital image over top of um, another image. Um, and it makes the image become augmented or enhanced, if you will. So examples of AR are like Pokemon Go, or if you all are familiar with um, the Ikea furniture store, you can be inside of your home and, and, and pull up the Ikea app. And it's almost like the furniture is inside of your home. If you said, hey, how would this couch look in my living room? And so you can pull out that app and be able to show how the furniture looks inside of your living room or your kitchen, your bedroom. So that's augmented reality or AR. Um, so if, if you can see the image here, so let, let's back up real quick. If you see, here's the first image of VR, okay? If you look at his headset, there's no pass-through. So this is pretty fully fully encased. The, the, the screens are fully encased in here, and it creates a completely 100% digital image, okay? Um, 
And so now when we look at AR, if you look at the headset, there's almost like glass here that you can see through, right? And so that's, you do that so that you can see a real life image or a real image, uh, as you can see here is a cityscape. And then on top of that, you're able to overlay the digital images, which are like this uh, giant, looks like a Loch Ness monster. Uh, some location pins or tags have a giant astronaut here. Um, and so you see it's a merging of real life imagery and digital imagery created by a computer or, or some your headset here. Uh, and so you see, again, this, this AR headset allows you to actually still see what's actually in front of you. And then on top of that, overlay some digital elements as well. So that's AR. So the difference between VR and AR. Okay. And then we'll before we get to <laughs> to that slide um, from the audience. So then what do you think mixed reality is? And you can just type it in the chat box. What would be your guess? So we had we went over VR, AR. So what do you think mixed reality is? OK, so James said, I don't know, <laughs> but you can take a quick guess based on what we just went over. Anybody? OK, nobody wants to guess, so we'll go we'll go ahead and just tell you. So mixed reality is sometimes referred to as XR. And so with mixed reality, it's just simply kind of as it sounds with the word mix. Um, it's a category that both AR and VR fit under. OK, so did you want to? Yeah, I mean, just pretty much what you said. So when you talk about mixed reality, you're talking about any of the technologies that fall under using some sort of a digital display um, along this spectrum of 100% digital to like a mixture of real imagery and digital imagery or digitally created imagery, I should say. So, so we'll review really quickly how mixed reality is reflected in Black Panther and then Mr. Mo get into the cool toys that he has or gadgets he has. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, why are we talking about mixed reality as it pertains to Wakanda? Because mixed reality, uh, both in AR and VR form, are presented in the movie Black Panther, right? So here's some examples from the movie. Um, number one, the larger image back here, you see Shuri, this is when the agent was, was uh, injured. Uh, Shuri is using uh, really essentially an advanced AR platform to look at his internal organs. Like mm -hmm. right here, she's looking at his spine. She sees where it's injured. Um, it, that's better than actually better than some of the imaging technologies that we have today. But just an example of how it could be used potentially in the future to see your internal organs and then allow a doctor or somebody like Shuri to interact with those parts and pieces, take a deeper look, zoom in see kind of what ligaments are hurt um, or, you know, what parts of your body organs are in need of repair. Um, over here, we have it used as a communication tool, right? So now it's like dialing up instead of a phone, you have, I think they were using Kamoyo beads right here as well to project a, a, an image so that they can communicate with each other. It's like pulling out a phone. Um, and then over here, we have the VR piece where Shuri was actually using a virtual car to drive the car that was actually at that time, I think, in Korea. So she was in Wakanda driving a car virtually using VR, driving a car that was halfway across the world in South Korea. Um, so you can kind of see that technology. And this actually exists today. I saw that a company called NVIDIA uh, actually demonstrated it where a guy was in a VR uh, suit or, or goggles and he was he had a little driving mechanism in front of him and he was driving a car that was outside uh, on the street so that actually exists today and so this is kind of where you can get into like maybe some drone drone style car okay so this is how it was displayed in Wakanda um, some very advanced technologies some that exist today and some that are potentially on the horizon and so we just kind of wanted to make that connection. Okay, remember we use Wakanda as an example of technological excellence on many levels, cultural excellence, uh, and so forth. And so um, that's how that technology is used in the movie Black Panther. And so uh, I guess now we want to talk about why we think you should take an interest in mixed reality. 
So currently there's a high need for AR and VR uh, engineers, okay? So in terms of how we started with the desktop, and then you can probably get into this more <laughs> better, better than I can, then we went from the desktop to the laptop, then from there we went to the mobile phone, and then eventually we're going to move to um, like glasses, Okay, so it keeps changing in terms of um, how people are using images, sound, text, so on and so forth. So there's currently not enough people to uh, fill these jobs. Okay, but there it's it's highly needed. Uh, the AR and VR engineers. Yeah. So I mean, just number one from a job perspective, if you have the skills to create uh, or, or learn or, or modify technologies in and around AR and VR, you're gonna be highly sought after. I think uh, you saw a stat that said they were second only to machine learning engineers. So machine learning is really a subset of artificial intelligence. So if you think about AI and, and all the things that are promised for AI, uh, AR and VR is right up underneath that in terms of where at least uh, technologies and companies see uh, the technology going and see a need. And so, it, like Erica was saying, if you look at the progression or the evolution of technology uh, relative to how we interact with it, it used, used to be you would have a computer in a big room, mm -hmm. then it was on your desk, then it was on your lap, then it was on your hip or in your pocket in the form of a smartphone, right? Um, even now, you can think of smartwatch being closer in proximity to you as a human being. Next we're thinking about the next computing platform will be augmented reality where you have maybe a set of glasses that you wear all day but that you're able to to see and and, and, and take in information via an ar interface um maybe that can track your hand so you can interact with it kind of like iron man does in his heads up display and then eventually and i know a lot of people may disagree with this as far as like a technological leap but eventually there are people who are working on how to interface with the computer physically. So like a brain interface, right? Where maybe you have an implant. So now you don't even need a phone or glasses. You can maybe just think of what you wanna pull down. So maybe you do a Google search in your brain and maybe it displays using, um, you know, your optical nerve and sends something to your eyeball and you're able to actually see that in front of you. Um, and, you know, maybe that's, that's decades away, but they're working towards that, okay? And whether you believe in um, be becoming a cyborg, there are people who are working on these technologies. But as you look at the history of technology and our relationship physically to it, it's becoming closer and closer. Because um, I mean, imagine if you can just really find anything you wanna find simply by thinking about it, how much more uh, powerful we could be. And so, you know, there are some people, and this is me kind of veering off course here, from a philosophical standpoint have said that, you know, uh, AI won't take over because there's some people who think that if we give these super smart machines that mm -hmm. they'll eventually take over. And the only way that we'll be able to resist that is if we merge with machines. Mm -hmm. And so now we have those cap super intelligence capabilities, capabilities. super, um, they call it super, super uh, strength. So I think uh, super intelligence, super longevity and super well being. So all by merging with computers and technology. So uh, that may be on the horizon, but. Uh, and so if you have ethical issues or questions about that, that's why it's important to be in the room, be able to have these skills so you can make decisions on whether or not you think that this um, should, this, this, these type of technology should go forward, okay? So um, let's talk about how do we consume? Can we move on to that? Yeah. How do we consume? AR and VR mixed reality uh, currently. So typically you, you've you probably seen these around, these are the cardboard headsets, okay? Again, you this is ones that you use with your smartphone. You pretty much insert it here. All the computing power still resides on your smartphone. This is just essentially acts as a viewer. Two lenses here, allows you to look closely on your screen. And when you when you pull up an app or something, again, it creates those two different screens that are offset there and allows you to have that depth 
or of perception. I wanted to ask a quick question. So in the chat box, have you all used this type before? What is it called? Just cardboard? Uh, yeah, like a cardboard viewer, Google so, headset. This isn't Google manufactured, but they were the first ones to actually to do develop it. like so, a cardboard okay, headset. So. Yeah. All right. So one. Okay. Yeah, so a couple one. people have one. Or have so this is yeah. This, so this is the lower cost one. Okay. Then okay. we we step up to the higher end ones here. This is Oculus Go. So Oculus is a company that specializes. They're actually owned by Facebook. Specializes in in uh, VR headsets. Um, you see, this one is a hard shell construction, uh, bigger screen. Everything resides in here, so you don't need a smartphone. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Um, Madam Papillon, I don't know if you're going off of Madam C.J. Walker, but if so, that's cool. Had a pop-up showing Madam C.J. Walker's estate with the cardboard. If you have the um, link to that, you can put it in the chat. That sounds very cool because we watched the uh, Netflix series over the weekend. So, yeah, that would be cool to see. Go ahead. So this one, again, you don't need a smartphone. It's all self-contained. And then it also has a single controller that you use like a mouse there's a trackpad on here a clicker all of that so now you can interact physically by pressing buttons with whatever you see on the inside okay so this is one step and then probably the state of the art at least for consumers right now is the uh the oculus quest okay and that's that's this set right here show them the box that mm -hmm. it comes in well it doesn't come in that this is just my carrying case right? oh okay that's mr <laughs> Mose. yeah that's mine uh, thanks madam <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one, again, self-contained, higher end. If you look at the lenses there, they're a lot larger. It gives you a wider field of view when you're in there. Uh, you can adjust some things here. A lot of games on here, a lot of other experiences as well. Um, this is, again, this is probably the high-end one here. They even have, they have cameras on the front here for tracking where you're at in space. It now can even track your hands. So you can even interact with this headset uh, without the controllers, but if you had the controllers here now, these controllers really act as if you've ever used a headset. They act as your hands in here. So when you when you had the headset on and you had the controllers, you can actually see a digital set of hands in front of you, and that allows you to interact with whatever you know experience you're you're in there. So right now, this this uh and this set is probably from a consumer standpoint the higher end set, one of the higher end sets. Um, down a step level uh, down from the rift, but um, pretty good headset. I love this headset. It's uh, pretty fun. The kids love it. Very immersive. And, uh, you know, if they keep along that path, you can really see the promise of VR and how it'll really be, you know, in everybody's living room at some point, you know. Um, so that's how we consume it. OK, but if we want to be effective in the future, um, we definitely want to move from simply consuming it to how do we create AR and VR experiences um, so that, you know, again, number one, jobs. And then also, if this is the next computing platform, then you maybe want to start to develop um, apps or experiences mm -hmm. for that computing platform, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, imagine when they first came out with the iPhone, if you knew how to create iPhone apps, you know, 10, 10, 11 years ago, you'd be set up to really benefit from that whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we then learn, at least get an introduction to creating experiences? And so, uh, you know, we always want to introduce you to tools that are free or very low cost and accessible on any platform. So we, we uh, recommend a tool and I'll share my screen here. Um, and I want to ask them to make sure that they can see it too. Okay. Uh, let so. me see. Let me focus it here. I think they can see. Can you guys? Uh, can you all see that? Well, sorry, you wouldn't be able to see it. Oh. Of, hold on. Let me switch back. Can you? you okay. Can see it. All right. Okay. So good. I'm just, good. So okay. this here is called Co Spaces. Okay. So Co-Spaces is a AR and VR creation tool, okay? And it's actually made for younger learners and educators, um, but it's how, very robust. How young? Um, I'd say down to like uh, second grade, you, okay. can, you can really get into it. And even younger than that, you know, with the help of a, a parent okay. or an adult. Mm -hmm. um, so you can create spaces, uh, create experiences, VR and AR, 
using this app, okay, or this software, okay? So I actually have an account, and I, and as far as the deep dive deeper is concerned, uh, we want you to, if you can, go and sign up for a student account and start creating, okay? So we're not going to get too deep into how to create, but we want to introduce you to this tool and some of the things that it can do, okay? So I'm actually already logged in here. So once you're logged in, you can create a space from scratch. So let's actually do that so we can kind of see so I'm actually just going to create uh, a, a 3D environment here. And as you can see, you can kind of move around in here. It's just like a blank space, OK? Um, now, this is where you go on the bottom here, and you start to pull in characters, people. I'll pull in a couple people here. Uh, let's grab a little bunny here. <laughs> it's close to Easter. So uh, let's see. Let's grab. Um, uh, let's see. Can I grab a, a building or some city pieces here? Let's grab a building and pull that in. Oh, nice. So you can kind of see. And all of this stuff is typically originally uh, it comes in when you pull it in. It's already at scale. Um, and then you can um, adjust that scale as you see fit. OK, so that's that. And like I can make this smaller if I wanted to. Um, but we're just going to move it around here. And then we have people in here. And if I right click on that, I can give that person some animations, some actions. Let's see. Let's make them run. So when I press play, well, let me give that the bunny some animation as well. Uh, scared. We'll make scared. it scared. OK, so let me zoom in here a little bit. I'll, I'll put this down. And let me uh, put these uh, and you can actually program these as well. OK, Wow. so let's see. All right. So now when I press play, here's the camera here. OK, I can move the camera. So when you press play, it's going to give you the view from the camera. OK, and that's why I can move this around a little bit so that I'm able to see. Let's see. So that I'm able to see the bunny rabbit here. And uh, yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So when I go up here and press play, we'll see the angle from the camera. You see how it switches back. So I'll, let me go back out so you see that again. So here's our camera. OK. So when I press play, we'll be able to see uh, these animations and we'll see from the perspective of the camera here. So I press play. And you see the bunnies moving. And then this guy is running in place, okay? And we can actually make program him to actually physically move. And once you're in here, you can look around from the perspective of the camera. So I, now I'm looking up, as you see how big those buildings are. So it gives you that real perspective, okay? Um, so now we're we're working, we're creating a digital environment. We're creating, uh, you know, uh, a story if we wanted to create a story. Um, we can upload our own 3D models if we wanted, okay? Um, let's see here, uh, pull in different characters. There's some grass. If we want to pull some grass in here, we want to make it bigger or smaller. So there's, I mean, it's an infinite amount of things you can do in here. And if you have the imagination and the will, you can go in and start to actually piece these together and create your own game or AR VR experience. And so, um, it's very robust very low cost and very easy to get started and it's one of the reasons why i definitely recommend co-spaces okay and so um i've actually let me go back to the home here i've actually created a couple experiences to somewhat mimic what you've seen in black panther okay so like here and i've used what's called a merge cube um to actually so here's a black panther helmet okay a 3d model that i actually found online i imported it and then also another experience here where I just kind of pieced together. Here's an astronaut here um, and some some rock rock formations behind it. OK. And so what I wanted to do and one reason I made this was I wanted to recreate the experience of. Um, let me stop. Recreate the experience of what we saw in Black Panther when they had the Kamoyo bead and they were using it to project a. Um, a hologram or something. Mm -hmm. So, so we have, so you can actually build experiences for what they call a merge cube. Okay. So I have one here. And so what we're going to do, we're going to try to get you, um, 
give you the perspective of what it would look like. Um, so we're going to bring the camera around. Um, I have my iPad here with the co spaces. So once you actually build um, your experience in co spaces, you can download the co spaces app and then view that experience in, in AR and in, in using the merge cube. Okay, so Did you, you, you want to bring that around? Can you grab the it? camera? Yeah. Okay. All well, right, this is going to be kind of weird for a second. <laughs> so you can see a different perspective. How do I get? Can you pull it? Yeah. Okay. So, and, all right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so now I've got, uh, now here's the merge cube. So once I put the merge cube, here, put it this way. there we go. You can see the merge. So now if you could, if you remember the movie Black Panther, back it up. Oh. So, yeah, there we go. All right. So if you, if you remember the movie Black Panther, um, you see how I'm holding it is essentially hold, I'm holding the merge cube, but it looks as though I'm holding the Black Panther helmet. Yeah. So you remember the movie when they were uh, had the Kamoyo bead in their hand and they were experiencing essentially AR or hologram. That's kind of what you can see here. OK, with the helmet. All right. So it's like the helmet is here in front of me. This is augmented reality. You see, it has the digital helmet, but it's overlaid over the physical space. OK. And when I move the cube around, it tracks all of that and allows me to actually move this around like it's physically here. OK, um, so one more experience um, real quick. So I'm actually going to go into the second experience that I had created with the astronaut. I'm going to play that. And then see, here you go. So. If you can see that. Is so he now, walking? Yeah, put he's it, walking. Put it back, or do I need to go back? No, I was saying put your hand back. No, this one. Yeah, so we can see him walking. <laughs> no, down. <laughs> there well, we'll you go. Turn the camera. So okay. you look, you're looking at an iPad. Yeah, I got it. But the iPad no, is. You're not looking at the iPad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry aim, about aim the, the tech. camera towards the iPad. <laughs> directly right. at the iPad. I got it. So you can kind of see he's like he's walking on my hand. Again, another experience like uh, what you would see in Black Panther, okay, using AR. All right. So just something pretty, uh, and we can throw can that I back up. Back? Yeah. Okay. Um, like this? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're All right, back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just a little demonstration of some of the things you can do. Um, the Merge Cube, you can buy these. I actually got this on sale at Best Buy. Um, you can get them on Amazon as well, but it allows you then to kind of create an experience and then physically have it in that space with you, which is cool. Um, but really the whole goal is to get you started, get you introduced to creating these experiences. And again, the sky's the limit. These are just some introductory things that you can do. Um, but again, if you, if you get, um, really good at it. You can then progress on to maybe learn more about how the technology works, um, maybe become a, a creator of some of these platforms yourself. And again, if, 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 if it's true that we're going to be moving to an AR computing platform away from mobile devices, then if you, you're there at the forefront of actually creating some of these experiences, um, then you know, you'll be set up really to, to prosper from that. So another reason we just really wanted to get you introduced. So um, in the dive deeper section, which we'll post on the website later, again, we just really encourage you to go to Cold Spaces, create an account, tinker around with some of that stuff. And if you, or if you're able to get at least the uh, the inexpensive headset, how much do those? Tell them. You can get them. They have different uh, uh, brands, but it, you can get them from as low as five dollars. Oh, okay. yeah. So they're very inexpensive. Um, and then if most people have a smartphone of some sort, yep. And then you can use it and then you can go in and experience your own uh, the creation. OK, mm -hmm. so if you create something on Cold Spaces and you download the Cold Spaces app, you can say, hey, I'm going to go in, put my phone in it and go into the world that I just created. So that would be awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So and then they can share that. Right. If they and create you can share like that, a, yeah. a world um, in the Wakanda Tech course and go to the activity feed and then you can share some of the creations that you mm -hmm. uh, put together because yeah. that would be neat for other people to see as just well. just by like taking pictures or screenshots mm -hmm. and just share them in the in the community 
so that we you can kind of see what you, you think. share yours. Yeah, I'll, I'll share mine and then, you know, so you can kind of see how we share. But again, just just a way to get get at least your foot in the door on a technology that's really going to be blowing up um, and, um, you know, a way to introduce you to it. And hopefully you'll get better and better. And, you know, if you have any questions about that, definitely leave them under the site. And then there were a few questions here. Um, uh, Sam, did we answer your question? Because you said, is there a fee for the, uh, is this for a, f a free program? I don't know if that's what you were saying, or is there a fee for the program? So this is when you were doing the co-spaces. Co-spaces is completely yeah. free. Uh, well, they have, they have a pro tiers. plan. Yeah, they so they have, they have a free tier. So they, they call that freemium. They have a free tier with uh, limited functionality, but it, I mean, enough to get you started mm -hmm. and get the experience. And then if you decide, hey, this is something I really like, then you may want to pay a few extra bucks. It's not very expensive. Um, and then you can go deeper and it give you more more uh, ability to, to create different things. So, And, and um, they their, the account that they create, is that um, their own account or are they supposed to? No, it's their own, own account. account. I, I thought about linking them, but you know, okay. just create your own account. account. Um, and get in there, dive in. There are tutorials on the site. It's one of the reasons why we didn't want to go too deep. Um, but that'll walk you through how to get started. And then again, the sky's the limit at that point because you can really create anything in there. So, and um, so yeah, he said, so we answered the question about um, the, the tiers, and he said to please share that URL. So, in the dive deeper section, and I don't know if this was um, something you all. Um, didn't see in the Wakanda tech, like all of the, the different um, classes that we've had in the, in the past, including this one, there's a warm up, then the live session, and then the dive deeper. So the dive deeper will probably be posted um, today or tomorrow. And that's where you'll have all of the re other resources there, including co-spaces that will be included. Okay. And then um, Madam Papillon said, what are some of the programming language languages that coders use for VR? Well, it depends. Um, now, if you're actually creating, so they have um, really platforms that are already built to facilitate creating mm -hmm. these experiences, these games or whatever. Like if you've heard of uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Unity, those are all uh, already platforms that are built. And so it's kind of what they call abstracted away from uh, the actual coding language. You're more learning a platform there. I, uh, from what I understand, though, the probably the, the uh, programming language that probably most in line with what you would do in, in the gaming 3D space would be like a JavaScript or something similar. Um, and because that's kind of they use something called action script, I believe. So JavaScript and action script are pretty similar in terms of how they're constructed, those languages. Um, but really, it, I mean, any programming language, if you know how to program, you know, the fundamentals It's easier to hop from one to another uh, if you want to focus on that. But um, um, me personally, I think uh, as a general language, Python is probably the best language to start learning. Um, and typically they'll have modules that connect Python to maybe whatever you're working on. So, um, so good question. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, we hope you um, enjoyed hearing about Merge Cube and CoSpaces. And while we're all kind of at home, you know, the, these are some inexpensive ways that you can start creating. Okay. And don't forget to share. All right. Okay. So have a good uh, rest of your week and weekend. And until next week. See you later. All right. Bye-bye.